Today I have with me Logotarian Luke, as you probably know him if you frequent the Vault Tour scene. And uh, we decided to jam some Worlds Collide. Luke, uh, why don't you say hi to everyone? Hey, everybody. Um, I'm a frequent listener of the uh, Help and Future Self podcast, so it was great to meet Blake at the Vegas Vault Tour. So much fun. Um, we were even able to play in a uh, day two match, and that's how we met. And um, yeah, I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to have you on. Like when I started thinking about who I wanted to have on the list, you were definitely uh, in my first round of people I wanted to approach because I know you're not quite as active on the usual channels, social channels of Keyforge. Like I, I don't think I've seen you on Twitter. Um, what what social channels do you normally frequent? Like Discord and stuff. Yeah, we have a uh, Archons in Minnesota. So I'm from Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota. And so we have our own kind of local Discord. And then I uh, mostly just observe on the Sanctimonious, chime in here and there. Um, But I'm quite frequent on the Buy Sell Trade group on Facebook. Um, That's probably where some some folks see Luke Hemkin selling some some hot decks on there. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, and um, as always, I start off the show by I want to know what are you sipping on tonight? You know, that's a great question, Mr. Blake. So I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm easing my way into the, the brewery scene. Um, but, uh, the tried and true, uh, drink of choice for me is a nice cider. Uh, so what I am sipping on tonight is a, uh, just a classic strongbow cider. It is very delicious. Right. Have you ever had hot wings and cider before? No, but that sounds amazing. It is like, I, I'm not a fan of Strongbow. I like ciders, but not Strongbow. But I had a friend who introduced me to having hot wings and Strongbow. And it is like, it's it's a level up moment in your life, especially if you enjoy ciders. So I highly recommend try some hot wings and ciders next time you're out. And it will, uh, it will change your perspective on a few things. I am looking forward to it. That sounds great. I love it. So tonight I decided to switch things up and enjoy a classic gin and tonic, and I'm uh, having some Empress Gin, which is actually a locally distilled gin here in uh, Victoria, which is uh, pretty close to Vancouver. It's our capital of uh, this province, and it's quite a unique gin because it's a very nice like royal blue color, and when you add Mm. like soda or when you add different things to it, it changes color. So it started off like this blue and now with adding lime and tonic, it becomes almost like a lavender color and it has different ways where it interacts with different um, ways that you mix it, which is a, it's a really unique beverage. So, and very smooth. So I'm a fan of a gin and tonic, I must say. Oh, I like that. That sounds great. That sounds really good. So um, I guess the next up is uh, let's talk about your deck tonight. So um, we, we just had a chat before we we jumped on here talking, deciding to go over um, what type of deck we wanted to play. And you chose to play your favorite Worlds Collide deck. So explain why this is your favorite Worlds Collide deck. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is my favorite Worlds Collide deck. I was able to get a handful of the Target um, two-player starter sets before they were released. And the first box that I opened, this was one of the two decks. Um, t- oh, so the houses in it, it's called Bramble of Blight Lake Bath. Bramble of Light Lake, Blight Lake Bath. Um, kind of a tongue twister. It's Dis Sarian Star Alliance. So it has Star Alliance and Sarians, the two new houses. Um, and uh, let's just say I'm a big transporter platform fan. And it has <laughs> three Light of the Archons in it. Um, so you can do some bouncing nonsense, uh, and it's super fun to play, super fun to play. Yeah, it, it looks really fun. Um, so tonight I brought, uh, Harm Cloud, the geologist of the marsh, and this was actually, I opened this up my last chain bound and it was a ton of fun to play. Uh, has a really, really cool, obviously the double golden spiral is never a bad thing with a double scutum, but it's the double Philophosaurus that I really like. I'm a big fan of that card. It was the card I was most hyped about going into the new set. Um, And then the other cool thing is it has a double no safety in numbers with two Brens, which is never a bad thing. Mm. Um, And then the Nature's Call, which I feel is uh, one of the best forms of removal when dinosaurs are in the fray. So that's kind of uh, the the highlights for me. And I somehow have caught the bug of Xenos Blood Shadow because I think I have like seven or eight <laughs> decks with it now, which seems ridiculous, including a double Xenos Blood Shadow deck, which is awful because you don't want two toads. Oh. <laughs> yeah, totally. 
Yeah, but it's uh, this is a really fun deck. So I haven't played it a ton. I know you definitely have more experience with your deck, but this deck does do some really cool things. So I'm excited to explore it more as we uh, have a have a bevy and uh, have a conversation. I love it. Let's so uh, it. let's let's jump right on in. All right, looking at my opening hand here. Yeah. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to keep this one. I think I have something that... very saucy in here. All right, I mulliganed, and I think I'm happy with my choice. Okay. All right, I will go first. I'll get to play one card. And I'm going to choose Sarian playing one of my favorite artifacts in the set, City Gates. Oh, fantastic. Such a good card. Such a good card. So I have a question for you. Um, what is your new favorite? Like, what's your favorite turn one play that exists within Worlds Clyde now? Like, so a new, well, let's say a new card. So it has to be from something new, not something that was reprinted. So what's your favorite turn one play? Mm, you know, I think I might want to hop on to... Um, one of the leader trains, you know, is a, a card that can uh, can go in, be the center of the battle line. What's the what's the logos leader? It has that crazy Zenzi. name. Zenzi. Yep, that's it, man. That's that's Zizi it. Tots. <laughs> <laughs> totally, such a good card. It's yeah, such a good card. All right. Um, so I did a nature's call double flaxia play just now, which worked out quite well. That's why I was excited. <laughs> For that opening starter. Yeah, I can see that. I <laughs> am going to uh, let's let's do let's do some of this. I'm going to put down in the furnace and uh, purge that bad boy. Um, yeah, this is what we're going to do. Uh, one of three harbinger of dooms. Yeah, that's with the blood shard imp. I saw that. Mm -hmm. That is definitely some some good times right there. All right, over to you, my friend. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's let's move on with the questions. Uh, I want to know, how did you get into Keyforge? This is the question that I always like to lead with because I feel like everyone has an interesting story behind it because it's not a game that you gravitate to the same way as others. So what got you into Keyforge? Yeah, it's, it's actually such a cool story. Um, so what got me into Keyforge was uh, I never really played Magic or any card game for that matter. Uh, Keyforge was the first competitive or card game period that I ever played. And so what was fun about it was uh, my brother, my younger brother, Daniel, and I, we, so being in Minneapolis, we um, went to Fantasy Flight, the game center, which is like 10 minutes down the road from us. And um, what we decided to do, oh, let me see here. I got to keep you off check, my friend. Um, That's fine. You know what? Yep, this feels real good. Um, so we stroll into Fantasy Flight Game Center one day, and um, what we did not know was that Saturday it was the World Championship of uh, Legend of the Five Rings, Game of Thrones, the card game, and uh, that's what was going on that Saturday. And so we walk in, we see tons of people from all over the world. It was the coolest thing ever. Um, and we're like, this is amazing. We've never played any card games like this. This is so cool. And so what we decided to do was um, we decided to just walk over to the wall and uh, pull one of these card games off of the wall and uh, and just try and, try and learn how to play it. And so we sit down and... Um, we grab Legend of the Five Rings. We're over in kind of the casual area, and uh, one, two of the world class professional uh, players, um, guys at the tournament, come over to us and they say, "Hey, uh, are you guys just trying to learn how to play the game?" And um, so we said, "Yeah." And uh, so then they sit down and they teach us how to play Legend of the Five Rings. It's a super complicated game, but it was so fun. It was like uh, it's going to sound like an exaggeration, but it's like if LeBron James was teaching you how to shoot a free throw, 
right? It was like these <laughs> these like world class players teaching us how to play these, this card game. It was the coolest thing ever. And so then uh, after that experience, we're like, man, we should get into card games. This is so much fun. And then um, we went home, started to look into Legend of Five Rings, or they call it L5R, and um, and then we're like, oh man, this is uh, you know, this is going to be quite. Oh my gosh, double Philosophers. <laughs> These guys have got to go. Um, let's see here. All right, I think this. I think this play feels good. Well, oh yeah, this feels real good. Um, so I'll just, <laughs> I'll just, I'll just finish my story quick. And so, um, investigate L five R, figure out what it would take to get into the game, and then I'm trolling around Fantasy Flight's website, and then I figure out Keyforge is coming out the next week. And so then I start to learn about Keyforge, figuring it out, coolest thing ever. And then, um, yeah, that's how we got into Keyforge. Super fun. So you you quickly pivoted away from the L5R into Keyforge, basically, but it was came from that whole experience of... Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Choose three creatures. Yep, I want to choose those three. Um... So you get two of mine and one of yours, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it says destroy the three most powerful creatures, but I see... Oh, yeah, the five... Yeah, there we go. Two fives, and then I guess my... Yeah. My... Boom, baby. Um, That'll do it. And then I'll throw down the mighty first officer brain. Such a good card. I uh, can't argue with that. I'm going to reap with this dude. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, sir. There it is. Um, yeah, so uh, just such a fun experience um, uh, at Fantasy Flight the Game Center. These great guys just teaching us, introducing us to card games, and then figuring out that Keyforge is just such a lower barrier to entry and haven't turned back since. I love it. Like, that's that's super fun. Sorry, I'm going to just mug you right quick. Oh, yeah, you would. <laughs> Take care of Tabor, one of my absolute favorite cards. It's such a good card. Yeah, the deck that I played um, at the uh, the um, Pax Vault Tour, my sealed one had three Falafasaurus, my friend. Oh, that sounds like a dream. Yeah, it was super cool, man. It was really, really fun. Well, that's like a perfect segue. Tell, tell us, how was your Pax experience? I know you um, you did quite well, I think. You did a yeah. decent showing. Yeah, I um. So let me uh. Okay, let me do this real quick. You know, this is quite interesting. Like chat, having a conversation and mm-hmm. playing Keyforge at the same time. You know, um, that is that is the thing. It works on your multitasking skills. It kind of breaks down your barrier a little bit with questions. You may be a little more more uh, either off kilter one way or the other, whether it's playing the game or answering the questions. So create some interesting scenarios. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't. Fight. Did you play one tricky card? Yes, yeah, sorry, I played. No, you can't reap. You can fight. Oh, can't reap. Okay. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to do. Yep. So I'm going to do this. I'll unfortunately blow up my own guy and him and Brend. So we'll blow up everyone. I'll just play this and then. Because I can't stop you. I'm going to play not finish with you and get my homies back. That's always a good plan. Yeah, let's get all the star lines back. So, uh, at PAX, played in both Vault Tours, played in the uh, Archon Vault Tour, and then played in the Sealed Vault Tour. The Archon Vault Tour, I brought my beloved uh, Triple Hunting Witch deck. Um, you have played against this one, uh, Mr. Blake. Yes. And um, ended up going uh, three and three, uh, which I was a little bit a little bit uh, bummed about just uh, overall, but what was encouraging about it was um, my word of returning card uh, really came in the clutch in my world's collide match matchups. So um, all three of my losses were super, super close. Kind of one of those coin flip things at the end that just didn't fall my way, but I'm totally okay with that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I just really think that uh, my deck is great against the world's collide meta. Um, Really pleased with how I did. And, um, 
yeah, just super excited about uh, continuing to use that deck uh, moving forward. Um, and then, uh, so that was the Archon Voltour. And then the Sealed Voltour, I started off with a hot 4-0 start with my Triple Philophosaurus uh, deck. And then um, went up against uh, Nathan from TTR on stream. Um, and he, man, he had this really bonkers deck. Uh, it was Logos, Sarian, and um, Star Alliance. He had two memory chips, my friend. And so what he would do is he would stash all of his Star Alliance away. He had a pretty nice uh, Logos lineup, but then he had just a ton of dino creatures. He must have had like nine or ten dinos in there. So he just had this dominating board. Um, I think he just had a much better deck than I did. Um, and uh, so I just did the best that I could. Um, but it was it was really, really fun to play with him. Great guy. Super great guy. Yeah, Nathan is a good guy. He's uh he's he's always active on Twitter and supporting the stuff I do, so I, I appreciate him. And he's a he does a great work just for the community in general with what him and TTR do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well that's that's good to hear. I'm I'm glad that I got to do this conversation right after you come back from PAX. It's like the perfect time. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. So oh, um the next the next question I have for you is what is your favorite house and why is it your favorite house? That's a great question. Um, so I would say currently in this moment, um, oh, your Pam Pack is making everybody huge, my friend. It, what is yeah, up with that? That's no joke. Okay. Well, he's going to he's gonna go down. Um, so my current favorite house would be Star Alliance. Now, I know that my, you know, my handle that I go by is Logotarian Luke. But uh, gosh, playing at a house just feels so good. Feels so good, mm-hmm. Like It really does. Yeah, I can't, I can't argue with that. Mm-hmm. Huh, this is a tricky position. I feel like we're, we're on a knife's edge here in the game. Like This, this could go one way or another very fast. Mm-hmm. Okay, so while, while I'm trying to debate how, how to uh, do this, have you noticed you have um, a house that you constantly pull? Like, like when every opening deck, you're like, "Wow, I keep getting this house all the time." I feel like it's like I can't get away from it. Do you have Do you have any uh, a house experience or or that anything like that that's occurred to you or happened to you? You know, I would say in the early days, um, uh, it was always untamed, which I was really happy about because I love my <clears throat> my dust pixie nature's combo nonsense. Um, so I love. Early on, I was always getting untamed. Uh, in Worlds Collide, though, I'd probably say that, uh, believe it or not, I've been getting a lot of dino decks, and that feels really good. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it feels really great. So you can't um, get away from them, but you're okay with that, basically. Yeah, oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know. I, I think some other folks say this, but, like, I don't know if I've ever really, like, pulled a bad dino lineup. You know what I mean? Um yeah. Yeah, they're all just so good. All right, Blake. What's interesting, I think, is when you pull a dino lineup that has very few dinos, but you have really cool action cards, and you have to kind of understand where in at what stage in the game you really want to play your dinos and stuff like that because they're more limited. I find those very interesting dino decks because you really mm-hmm. want like you really want your creatures to interact when you have a uh, Saurian, but that's not always the case. So I find that super interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Oh my gosh, this is this is going to be real interesting here. So, um, I think so. Here's I think here's what's going to happen, my friend, is we're going to uh, we're going to do. Mm, yep, I I think I like this. We're going to exalt Mister Raptor. We're going to do this one more time. Why not? And, I'm going to throw down the rooster guy and then uh, yep, we're just going to leap here and uh, cross our fingers, my friend. Well, that changes my play a little bit. Um, okay. Yowzas. I'm glad I played my Saurians last turn. I can tell you that much. Mm-hmm. So let's go. Hmm. I, th- 
think I better take care of this right now before it gets out of hand. Mm -hmm. And so my next question for you is what would you consider your greatest key forge achievement? That's a good question, Blake. Um, I probably say my greatest keyforge achievement um, was uh, making day two at Collinsville and making day two uh, at Vegas. So top eighting both of those events, um, both Archon events, I feel like that's been um, probably my greatest keyforge achievement. It's felt so good, so good to do that. Yeah, that is, uh, I mean, I know how I felt. And that was my first vault tour getting to make day two was just the most amazing experience for me. And and it was so cool that I got to like play against you. And it was like, you know, when you lose, you're kind of like, you feel salty about it. But I wasn't mm-hmm. salty at all because it was just so much fun getting to play with you. So, um, and I was happy that you were getting to go on. So that was like a really cool thing that I was not expecting to exist. Hmm. Um, oh my goodness. This is so weird. I don't know. Like, can you stop me? Oh no, you can't. <laughs> nope. Just playing it out. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to re- go to my final question of the series and this is my, my wrap up question always. And it's, if you could have any character in key forge be your spirit animal or you connect with as your spirit animal, who would it be? Oh man, that's such a good one. Uh, so you're you're gonna hold me to one answer, just one. No, if you have two, I'll I, I'll allow it. <laughs> okay. Well, it, you know, I think the first one that just gut reaction comes to mind is um, uh, probably would be the helper bot. Would probably okay. be the helper bot. Now, here's why I think. Um, the helper bot is, uh, I just think is such a fun card to play, uh, helping other folks out, um, being able to play out of house. I think it's just such a fun, uh, a fun card. I love the art. And I just think that that's just kind of part of my personality and who I am is just, uh, wanting to help other people out and, um, you know, just being a nice guy in general and, um, I don't know. I just think that that was just kind of my gut reaction. Um, the other one that I was thinking about, it was uh, another Logos card that I really enjoy is the Knowledge is Power card. Um, is I just love the like the scientist guy on it. and uh, That character you identify with, like analyzing. Yeah. And being yeah, 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 for sure. So I'd say like some, you know, the helper bot from like a creature animal perspective, but uh but I also really enjoy the the knowledge is power card, and I've had some fun decks with that card. That's been really fun to combo off of. Interesting, and and uh, I guess it's it's no uh, coincidence that you're called Logotarian Luke, and you chose two uh, two logos cards in that in that segment. <laughs> yep, totally, totally. Yep. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming on today. Where can where can people find you if they want to connect with you? Yeah, I think uh, mainly just on the Discord. Um, I'm Logotarian Luke. I'm on uh the sanctimonious discord i'm part of all the other discords so you can feel free to reach out to me uh on any of those otherwise uh, you'll probably see me on the facebook groups um as luke hemkin and uh like i said i'm i uh enjoy flipping decks and uh and just kind of keeping my keyforge collection nice and clean and um uh so you can see me posting stuff on there all right well thanks so much for coming on luke and everyone as always May your ember never be stolen and you forge your keys promptly. Have a good one.